Hello, welcome to episode 263 of the Whatnots Review Show, where every week we pick a story and we talk about it. This could be a movie, TV series, anime, manga, comic book, audio drama, all kinds of entertainment. We watch it, read it, listen to it, and then we come back here and talk about it. My name is Melissa Wilkinson, and I am joined, as always, by Kyle Springer. Good morning, Melissa. How are you? I'm doing okay. This is a recovery day for me because yesterday right? I had my big Boppenheimer double feature and I was out of the house for like 12 straight hours. Yeah, yeah. We we did that on Friday. Uh, so thankfully we kind of had Saturday to recover. Uh, but it's it's just a recovery weekend. You know, that's that's kind of what you have to do. Um, so we, we got this podcast and then since we did go see uh both yeah. Barbie and Oppenheimer uh Yeo and I will be recording our thoughts on that a little bit later so I'm excited mm -hmm. it's gonna be a good day good day indeed um yeah I mean th that's that's kind of what I did right this that's all either of us have been up weekend, to this weekend right <laughs> do you <laughs> yeah. have an exciting beverage what's uh, that can not opening super sound? excited it's a it's a <laughs> monster juice pipeline punch it's pink so i guess you could say it's in honor of barbie uh but no cool. nothing exciting this time so <laughs> just something to wake me up as for a long day of podcasting oh yeah so yes much in there the way go. that a man frozen for a thousand years in a cryogenic tube would need to be woken up yeah Indeed, <laughs> with chemicals. Today, <laughs> today we are talking about Futurama, a beloved show of mine, uh, a show Kyle has seen some of, but has always wanted to know better. In honor of Futurama returning with new episodes to Hulu yeah. this week, we picked out, well, you let me pick all of them out, yes. uh, seven selected episodes of Futurama to discuss. A curated sampler platter of Futurama. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm excited about this. Like you said, Futurama is a show that I've known. I've seen bits and pieces of here and there. Uh, I've always really enjoyed it. I just never truly watched it. Um, but it's it's always been on my list of like, man, I need to watch that one day. Um it's like this is a show that I've especially been more interested in rather than The Simpsons, uh, mm. which was also a big show when I was yeah, 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 younger. But I've mentioned on some of our podcasts, The Simpsons always felt like my friends older brothers <laughs> show. And then when Futurama yeah. started, it's like, oh, it's like sci-fi they're in the future they're in space like that's that sounds more like my speed um and yeah i was i remember like when it got started i remember when it first got canceled and then brought back and then canceled again and then brought mm. back and then here we yes. are yes third we, time's we are <laughs> we are now embarking on the third reboot of future yeah. yep 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 <laughs> So I'm excited um, and it worked out that the seven you picked, there was one of them that I, I knew the contents of, mm. but beyond that, I hadn't seen these. Um, so these were not the like random episodes that I caught on like Adult Swim or oh, good. <laughs> something uh, way back in the day, 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 day. So these were all new for me nice i i futurama is the one sitcom that i think i've seen every single episode of i have a, a spotty track record with sitcoms a good sure. sitcom can run for a very long time and maybe it's like i came in in season three and i stopped watching season five but futurama beginning to end this one i have covered <laughs> and yeah. i tried to pick a good selection of episodes. I've got some from the original Fox run, some from the Comedy Central run. I've got the more emotional ones, the really speculative ones, ones that are just straight up jokes. Uh, yeah. I tried to give you a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think it was a good mix. Uh, and they also did kind of go to, to 
together cohesively, um, which, good. which was good. So, yeah. I yeah, there is a little bit of a, a focus on the Fry and Leela romance here because I've always found mm-hmm. that very touching and they are the source of some of the series' best episodes. It's a lot like Simpsons in that when the show, so known for its comedy, chooses to hit you in the heart, it hits hard. <laughs> It is emotionally very effective. The episodes we covered were with the uh, episode numbers as they will appear to you on Hulu, which I believe is where both of us watched this. Season three, episode four, Parasites Lost. Season three, episode 10, The Luck of the Fryish. Season four, episode one, Roswell That Ends Well. Season five, episode nine, The Sting. Those are all from the original Fox run and then from the Comedy Central run. Season 7, Episode 7, The Late Philip J. Fry. Season 7, Episode 10, The Prisoner of Benda. And Season 10, Episode 13, Meanwhile, which is, up until now, the most recent series finale of Futurama. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Um, Yeah, I knew about the contents of Roswell that ends well that's <laughs> just like one of before, the yeah. like cultural osmosis things that I, I I heard it's like oh yeah he's his own grandfather yeah how does that work uh and yeah I've 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 just never watched that one until now um but yeah I I I loved these a lot um Good. I had a great time with them I, I I guess we can kind of jump right into like our our plot synopsis of, uh, of <laughs> this. I don't know. I, I yeah. feel like most people at least have seen are, are like me that had like maybe they've seen mm. a handful of random stuff. They're familiar with the characters, mm. but that's kind of it. They're just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Good show. Future out. <laughs> The show starts with pizza delivery boy Philip J. Fry delivering a pizza to a cryogenic freezing laboratory on New Year's Eve 1999. He gets accidentally locked inside one of the cryogenic freezing tubes and he's trapped in there for a thousand years. So we have this 20th century man waking up in the year like uh, 3,000 and uh, 2,999. He's a thousand years in the future. He finds his like great, 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 great times a million nephew who is the professor. Uh, He starts working for the professor's delivery company, Planet Express. He befriends a bending robot named Bender. Bender Mm -hmm. Bending Rodriguez. He falls for uh, tough Captain Leela. They've got a number of other beloved crew members. Grad student Amy. Hermes, the accountant. Dr. Zoidberg. Scruffy, the janitor. These episodes <laughs> I gave you are missing a lot of the fun recurring characters like uh, Zap Brannigan and Kiff or Mom. But we accidentally got a good amount of Scruffy in here. And I am we happy did. with yeah. that. We did. We, we, it felt like we got a complete arc of, of Scruffy yes. <laughs> in here. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Um yeah, I I I I think this was a well curated list like you said a l- l- little bit of everything. Um it did focus on the romance. Um yeah, I I just have good things to say with these. There's some some classic good. sci-fi stories that are yeah. ha- happening in here the like we need something that can get really really small and go inside his b- 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 body to some time travel a- a- antics. Um, we have like three different time travel variants just in these seven episodes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd think that they would learn not to do it again, considering <laughs> how badly no. they messed it up the first time and then the mm-hmm. second time and then the third time. <laughs> but no, they they continue just messing with the space time continuum and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> You got to keep moving forward. You got to try it all. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think. I think of the ones that we watched, I have to say, I think my favorite was Meanwhile, was was the the finale. Um, 
I don't know. Like I, I, I did like the one about uh, his brother. I like that one too. The luck I, of the <laughs> Farish. Those two. I, I had think, to really give you that one to me. I had to give you that one as a b boy. Oh like yeah. Kyle <laughs> needs to see the episode with the break dancing. I could do that. <laughs> No, I, can't, I, I can't i can't do any of that <laughs> but yeah that i i think those two um luck of the fryish and mean while were my favorite of this bunch and they were kind of the the more emotional of of this yeah uh, this group here um and yeah i i think it's for exactly what you said like it's a show that is focusing on the comedy so when it does do these emotional stories it's like oh man for a little half an hour story yeah that was incredible yes that was great um Mm -hmm. so yeah nothing but good things to say and it is something that the show kept evolving and working on different angles of like you've got the main fry and leela romance you have fry remembering like his time back on i was gonna say back on earth he's still on earth he's in new new york now but like sort of missing his family from a thousand years ago he's got this close friendship with bender as the show goes on they do emotional episodes between all sorts of different sets of characters there's a really good bender and hermes episode There's Mm. a good Professor and Zoidberg episode. There's a good episode about the Professor and his parents. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Like, they don't just hit the the same relationship over and over again. That's true. The only one that I, like, I don't even want to say vividly remember, but I just remember the the one scene of Bender in his, like, pimp suit like walking down <laughs> down this 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 street that's that that's like the only thing that i remember from all of the the, the, <laughs> the futurama i've watched over over mm. the years that's it that's all <laughs> i I'm, i don't remember specifically when that happened but i'm sure it has been during his yeah. many antics yeah uh-huh indeed indeed uh so you yeah, I would say right now is a perfect time to to check out mm-hmm. Futurama. Um, I, I so mm, Melissa, correct me if I'm wrong. Each time they did kind of reboot the series and they did like a new series finale, was there also kind was that first episode kind of a reintroduction? Ah, uh, good. I think there's a lot of continuity with it. I don't think there's ever been like a clean reboot. There's always an awareness of what has happened before. The characters always have a memory of what it is that they've done before. But would you uh, like say in, it would be like a good jumping on point for new, like from when I had it first got canceled to the next time? Was that next spot like, hey, this is a good jumping on point? Sure. I think the show has a great pilot. I do recommend starting at the very beginning. There are still great okay. episodes back in like the original like 1999-2000 era. But after the first time it was canceled, then the show did four direct-to-DVD movies that were then aired on Comedy Central, like broken up into like three or four episodes of TV each. That's mm-hmm. a great period also. I, I didn't include that in here, but the first of those movies, Bender's Big Score, that's also a series highlight for me. <laughs> okay. If it wasn't good, good. long enough to have been its own episode, I would have included Bender's big score. Uh, and then when the show picks back up again on Comedy Central, like there's really no wrong place to start with Futurama. I think you look at it and you get it pretty easily. Like they're in yeah. the future. This one guy's from the past. They all work together at this spaceship, uh, at this delivery company that flies around on a spaceship. And that's how they get into different antics. <laughs> yeah. start anywhere turn on comedy central it might still be on that's that's what i was kind of g- 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 getting at is now would be a great time to jump into futurama yeah you can kind of jump in anywhere you like but with these new th- these new episodes coming out i feel like you could almost just jump in right th- 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 there and you'd probably sure. be o- okay uh, with the yeah. new stuff 
So it's it's a show that has been pretty consistent throughout its whole lifetime. I think taking both the sitcom approach and the speculative fiction, sci-fi and like genre parody and societal uh, commentary approach, like there's always fresh stuff for them to work with as Mm -hmm. the show goes on through time. There's great episodes in every single season. It's not like the show didn't come out of the gate strong or like weakened in the later like Comedy Central reboot seasons. Like it's pretty solid consistently. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, Well, yeah, I I say we take a quick break for some housekeeping. uh, And then when we get back, we can dive into these episodes a little bit more in depth. So we will be right back. Here at The Whatnots, we make multiple different shows, and a lot of hard work goes into making them, so we would love it if you check them all out. If you enjoy our shows, patreon.com slash the whatnots is the best place to show your support. For just a dollar a month, you can get early access to episodes, and at our $3 tier, a Patreon-exclusive podcast, The Pilots Club. You can even get a shout-out and thank you on most of our shows at the $5 tier. And if you're one of our patrons already, Thank you so much. It means the world to us. You can find out more information on our website, thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. You can also find us on YouTube and Twitch for video versions of the shows, trailer reactions, and live streams. And lastly, we have merch. If you want to grab yourself a shirt or a hoodie or a mug or something else, head over to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. All right, we are back once again. A big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. We love you a lot. We Thank appreciate you. it. It means a ton. Uh, over on the Pilots Club, our Patreon exclusive podcast, we got to watch Cable Girls this past month. It's a uh, Netflix show that helped launch Netflix Spain 1920s uh period piece a little more soapy than we were expecting but hey we haven't done a soap opera on that show or on mm-hmm. this this show uh so that was a, a a nice surprise for us there uh Melissa do you want to give them a little sneak peek about what we will be covering on the pilots club this next month uh our current ongoing monthly special is that we've been talking about the tv show the good place for one season a month in fact next season uh next week we are talking about the final fourth and final season of the show concluding that series so i thought to go along with that we would watch a previous tv show featuring the star of good place Kristen bell in veronica mars yeah, I'm excited for it. That one. who sounds like she could be a Futurama character. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Detective <laughs> Veronica, Veronica Mars. Mars. <laughs> it's like, how have you survived a thousand years into the future? <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Uh, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. That's at our three dollar tier and above on Patreon. Uh, so be sure to check that out because that's a lot of fun. Uh, Right here on the review show, we already mentioned we will be wrapping up our cover our coverage of The Good Place this next week. Uh, But this past week, in honor of Barbie, we went back and we watched the Brady Bunch movie, the the Mm -hmm. 90s movie that took the Brady Bunch, as you know them, and just dragged and dropped them straight into the 90s. yeah, that was also a lot of fun. I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did, but that's a good movie. <laughs> it, 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 it works. It works really well. It was a successful experiment. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Uh, over on the captain's log this past week, we talked about uh, all sorts of things, including the moon landing, Duolingo, <laughs> The Bear Season 2, uh, Mountain Dew Over Drive, and a giant cheeseburger without the burger. Just a, a giant stack of cheese. Uh, that, that, yeah, right. it's, we had we, a long discussion about what, what constitutes a burger. Can you put anything <laughs> between two burger buns and call that burger? 
we, we get up to some useless nonsense on the captain's log and I love it. It's great. <laughs> So we had a lot of fun over there. And last but not least, over on the reactor core, um, we we will have all sorts of spoiler casts coming up uh, here in the near future. Uh, we're continuing our coverage of Secret Invasion. We will be wrapping that yeah. up in the coming week. Uh, we're about to record our reactions to Barbara Heimer. And yes, we are doing that all yeah, as one together as thing. one. Yes, so not a separate it's, Barbie and Oppenheimer no. thing. It all just got it's, mis. It's one mi episode mix matched. That's yeah. about both movies and about our experiences our experience. doing both of them as a double mm -hmm. feature and <laughs> our encounters that day. Good I had stuff. many an encounter yesterday. Good stuff indeed. Uh, and then a little bit further down the road from all of that, we will be t t t talking about the Venture Bros movie. Uh, I think we'll save mm -hmm. that for next weekend uh, just to give me some time to catch up. On, I, I've seen it all, but it's been a long time. <laughs> we covered <laughs> seasons one through what? Six? Seven? One through um, seven. Oh. All of them, yeah. Here on the review show years ago, um, three years and ago, yeah, yeah. And uh, because it's been a while, I need a refresher. And Melissa, you are also waiting on your physical copy, which you might already yes. have. Um, no, but... it's um, the movie came out on VOD on Friday, which I've already okay. bought and watched. And then I also pre-ordered the physical media release, which comes out on Tuesday. So we're delaying this a week so I can get that disc, look at the bonus features, listen to the commentary and come to this yeah. with perhaps a bit more insight. Indeed, indeed. It'll be good. So look forward to all of that stuff. Uh, but that is about it for housekeeping right here, right now. Uh, so let's get into spoilers for Futurama. Bam. Okay. Uh, do you want to just go down the l list here? Yeah. Let's start with Parasites Lost. Melissa, I, talk to me about Parasites Lost. I picked this one because I saw a list of episode titles for the new season on Hulu, and there's one called Parasites Found. So I thought it would be pertinent for us to revisit this episode. And this is one come. that has really stuck in my head it is one of the earlier episodes i was probably a, a preteen when i saw this mm -hmm. and it's another one of the it's mostly a comedy episode that like hits you with the emotion towards the end which i guess is the format of most of these episodes right there's <laughs> there's fry that eats a truck stop sandwich this like disgusting egg salad truck stop sandwich. I was going to say an egg salad truck stop sandwich from a like not vending machine, but like the, a machine in the bathroom. Right. <laughs> well, the things that like I know where you can get pads and tampons and Bonnie Bell lip gloss. I don't know what they contain in a men's room, but in this episode, right, yeah. you can get an egg salad sandwich in one of those <laughs> things. And the fact that like the sandwich is so old that there is a tomato slice that has become this like hard black disc and they're like what's that cracker thing and he's like it's a tomato i think <laughs> like that's so specifically gross that i've never forgotten it this is the hardened black tomato <laughs> that's grosser than anything they do inside fry's body so like he he eats this old sandwich he gets this worm infestation that starts making him behave different and they do the uh the incredible the fantastic voyage thing where they mm -hmm. you think they're going to shrink down and go inside his body but instead they're wearing vr suits there's a real tiny ship that goes inside his body but the crew has not made themselves tiny they're just in the other room in a vr helmet which i i think is actually like an, an interesting to yeah. twist on that um yeah like why do anything to like actually experiment and physically change your body when you have the technology to just build these like microscopic robots of yourself. Mm. Why not? Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought that was a, a good twist on the, the classic. We need to get small and go inside his body. <laughs> mm -hmm. So 
good stuff there. But yeah, he, they the worms do make him behave differently in this not 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 in a like destructive way though. He's actually yeah. smarter. Like yeah, it's kind of this, a, this a flowers for impact. Algernon thing. Yeah. Or, that episode of The Simpsons where Homer finds out he's had a crayon stuck up his nose his whole life and then he gets it <laughs> removed and he becomes smarter and then Lisa can actually relate with him. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> ooh, excuse me. <coughs> ooh, I'm choking and dying. Um, no, Are you uh, also full of worms. Right. Yes, I am also full of worms. Thanks to um, some. <laughs> chemicals that i'm having here to drink um no uh yeah i i thought that it was a good twist because yeah it 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 also then plays into his love life with leela um who i i've never realized it but i know the voice actor of her character i like she has such an iconic voice and i was like I know that from somewhere. And then I looked her up and I was like, okay, she's in kind of everything. And then I saw her picture. I was like, oh, in Lost. I know her as John Locke's, <laughs> John Locke's like girl friend. Helen. Friend. Helen, yeah, ex exactly. Out of, all, all, out of Katie Seagal's many, many credits, I'm happy the, you thought of Helen. That she like is not mentioned on her paragraph of this is what she's known for it's all yeah. like all these extra stuff don't mention lost at all <laughs> i'm just like oh lost i i see okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but it like i've i've known her vo voice for so mm. long but since i just never truly like re really got into futurama i never we really made that connection of like i know her from somewhere mm. else so i i was uh thankful that i finally put that together good um because yeah she's <laughs> in all, all sorts of stuff married so, with children famously yeah. yeah yeah indeed indeed um but yeah the worms kind of play into the romance that her and fry have and they start to connect on a deeper level here, um, mm -hmm. which is, I, I think, this arc that we have in these seven episodes of the romance. I think this is a good place to start because it it feels like they have crushes on each other, but it is just it 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 feels like when you try and stick a USB in the computer, but you have it in <laughs> upside down. It's like, I know it wants to go oh, in sure. there, but it's just, yeah, it's not, it's not getting in there. Right. Fry has always had a crush on Leela and it has been the journey mm -hmm. of the show that she's like, yeah, he's sweet, but he's like kind of dumb. <laughs> like she's continually <laughs> yeah. frustrated with him. Yeah. Uh, but as the show goes on, I don't remember exactly what the turning point was, but they are, like you you see in like the the comedy central seasons we were watching in the last three episodes like they are a couple then so we yeah. do they're not stuck in like sitcom purgatory where the relationship never changes right yeah um which i i think is a good thing i like the passage of time in this mm -hmm. especially since they do so much with time travel um yeah i i i, I think I, I think having stuff like that is great for change, especially as this show has been rebooted or not even rebooted, but like relaunched multiple times. That's always when when I was in college and I was writing academic papers in my English class on comics and stuff like that. Some of the, the, the papers that I came across in my research was stuff on Superman and this idea that the character never really changes. And mm. because if you start to make him change and he does actually get married to Lois and that marriage sticks and they do actually have kids and so on and so forth that that means at some point you're going to have to stop the character because he will yeah. cease to be he will 
die of old age who who knows what like you will have to come up with an end for that character but if you keep him kind of still in this like will they won't they maybe they get married for a little bit but then uh uh-oh like super villain lex luthor erase the minds of the whole world right yeah it's it's just this repeating cycle uh then things can kind of stay the same and no matter who you are no matter what time period you live in you can still make and write that character and do your own story and it's just this kind of on and on and on this infinite like comics can just continue on you can jump in wherever you want right it won't really matter because they're just stuck right in this one time period um and it's it's just this this interesting struggle um but I, i think because this show is being relaunched multiple times i think having the characters kind of progress in this way of it started as a crush then there's some will they won't they then maybe there's some time travel antics but by the end yeah they do they are together and what we get in meanwhile at the end here is fantastic it it is Mm -hmm. a great look on yeah these two do really love each each other um it may not have always been that way but they grew to love one another and they have a great time just being yeah. by themselves. Um, so, yeah, good stuff. Mm-hmm. Good stuff with that. The key emotional part of Parasites Lost is that while the worms are inside Fry's body, making him more intelligent and more intuitive, he's able to master this incredibly difficult instrument called a holophoner that looks yeah. like a clarinet, but when you play it, it creates this like, visual projection and he plays the song that's like him and Leela like dancing across the stars across all these planets it's so beautiful and so like uh seductive to her (laughs) but then at the end when he takes the worms out of his body and he's just dumb old fry again he goes back to the drawing board the final scene in the episode is he picks up (laughs) this book called my first holophoner and he tries to play and he makes this like misshapen blob that slowly develops the like one eye and like purple ponytail of Leela. Like he's, he never stops trying to, to do something special for her. That's such a great image. Yeah. Um, and then even before he makes that, when he does the Frankenstein one, is 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 that right? Does he like somehow <laughs> right. Imme- make? Yeah, immediately after he gets the worms out of his body, he's like, "Let me play for you." And she's like, "No, I'm still seduced from before. I'm good." And he just picks up the holophoner and it makes this like gross, groaning Frankenstein and kills the mood. Which is, I, I mean, a talent on its own. Right. To be yeah, like, yeah, man, that's a good Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Yeah. How did you do that? It's alive. Um, God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like the idea that it, it is still it's a riff on the like boy picks up a guitar and mm. makes a song. But it is this like futuristic sci fi instrument that yeah produces an I- I- image of what the player is thinking or dreaming or imagining um which i is interesting that that's kind of cool yeah. um it it i don't know what's the name of the one with like the lights and you stick your hand in a theremin yeah it kind of reminds me I of that like that light, is like, it's like vibrations right that that is the most like sci-fi musical instrument that i know of and so i i feel like you could be like hey max rebo or whatever your name is from <laughs> star Wars, right yeah like you could give them that and the right. hollow hey, grand phone the thingy. nodes what they play kind of looks like a holophoner <laughs> exactly exactly um i i i think that 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 it's and it's 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 just nice it's a nice mm-hmm. way to to in, in tr- interpret the like, hey, here's what I envision for you and me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, in you ready to move on to the next one? 
I, I, I was just going to say they like at the end, like Farai kind of realizes that Leela is following f- or is is falling. Exactly. F- yes. For this more intelligent version of him. And he's realizing that's not really him. It's the worms inside him. And she like that's not the best representation of yeah. him and so he fights him and gets him out and goes back to his plain old dumb self um and he's just right, like which is a very right, this is me noble thing to do to like change yourself so that you are more authentic to, to revert yourself back to the, your most authentic self even if it means you're losing progress in this relationship you want because you know that's the bad way to go about it even if it's nothing you did intentionally right <laughs> it's like you knew very eating mature. this sandwich would make leela fall in love with him yeah like that is something that makes uh, philip j fry so effective to me as a protagonist is that he's such a dumbass but he does have a good heart he is very loyal and he really does want the best for himself and and those around him mm-hmm. Indeed. Indeed. Let's move on to the yeah. second one here. The luck of the, the Fryish. In this episode, Fry just hits a series of bad luck. And he remembers when he was a kid, he found a seven leaf clover. It uh-huh. was like his good luck charm. And his older brother, Yancey, kept trying to take it from him. We see Fry and Yancey through these different points in their life when like, when he's first born and Yancey's like, well, his name's Philip. I want to be called Philip. I don't want to be Yancey. Call me Philip. Like, he's just always trying to take stuff away from Fry. And Fry, like, goes back to the remnants of what used to be his old house and where he's like, I know I put the seven leaf clover here. And he can't find it. And he's like, my brother stole it. And then in the ruins of old New York, where they've built new New York, the future city on top of it, he finds a statue of what looks like his brother labeled. Here's Philip J. Fry, the first man to walk on Mars. And he's like, I'm Philip J. Fry. I wanted to walk on Mars. <laughs> yeah, he 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 gets to see all these accomplishments that uh, that it, it like he was like, that's supposed to be me. Right. Like, how how dare you steal my 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 mm-hmm. clover and then go live this full life that I wanted? Um, yes. And it, it it all comes down to at the end, you find out that that's not actually what happened. The brother did find the clover and did use it for a little while, but he kind of at, at least moved on from the clover. But he always missed his brother who yeah. he just didn't really know what happened to 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 him. Yeah. Um, and he he. His brother, Yancy, ends up naming his kid after his brother. So it's not his brother that did all of these accomplishments, but his nephew. Uh, And it it is just this this sweet, touching turn of uh, of events that is this like, no, you weren't forgotten. Like you weren't this no like you you were impactful and you you were loved and we missed you. Um, which is, I, yeah. I think, a, a really special moment for him to uh, write, like being a thousand something years in the f- in the f- future, basically knowing no one, and just to see, like, hey, here is a monument, basically to your me- 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 memory, and it's just like, oh, yeah, this is so sweet. I love yes. it. Yes. They go to uh, Orbiting Meadows, which is a intergalactic uh, cemetery, and their <clears throat> their plan is to grave rob the seven leaf clover from Yancey's body. But when they get there, they see the statue, and Fry like uncovers like the the plants or whatever that are at the base of the statue of who looks like his brother, and it's he sees that it fully says, "Here lies Philip J. Fry, named for his uncle to carry on his spirit," and yeah. I. I just get so teary just thinking of that. And then there, you see Fry just like collapsed there by this memorial statue. Like he's gotten it all wrong. He's been thinking of his brother wrong for all these years. And he's like, I'll, I'll leave it there. Like this belongs to my nephew. And I'm happy that he had that. Good stuff. Good stuff. It's, it's, it's so touching. But there's also so many great jokes in this oh episode. 
one of my favorite jokes <laughs> of all like all seven that that you g- 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 gave me here is when he's like let's go back to my old ha- 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 house and they get there and it is run down it's destroyed it looks <laughs> terrible and he's and he 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 looks at it and goes man it hasn't changed a bit and then it like smash cuts to like <laughs> in, in, to, to in the past and it looks the exact same it's run da, 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 down it's b- broken and just like that was so good it was so dumb <laughs> House he hid the, the seven leaf clover in a a vinyl record for the soundtrack to the breakfast club and young fry is holding it and he's like man i can't wait until i'm old enough to feel ways about stuff <laughs> right yeah <laughs> and at the beginning of the episode in 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 the future like everybody's going to this horse race and this is the uh, streak of bad luck that sets fry on this mission is that he loses all these bets and at one point he asks leela to give him a kiss for good luck and she kisses him on the cheek and he says no i meant tongue luck <laughs> right yeah <laughs> Oh, Fry, he's trying. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying. Um, yeah, I, I, I think this is an interesting one because you also get to explore the locations that they're, 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 they're yeah. in. Yeah. Um, too, and I, I like that. Something that I, I think, uh, that again, I don't know much about since I was never really a fan of, but something I've kind of seen from the outside is that. It, it seems like people have a really good idea of what spring failed looks like for the yes. Simpsons and like where everything is in relation to each other. Uh, and that's really, really neat. And I haven't seen enough of Futurama to know if that's really the case for the world they live in. But to to see yeah to see this like orbiting grave yeah 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 which i think we see again later in one yes, of these episodes you see it again. but we don't they, actually it, go there um uh there are recurring set pieces like i think in the final episode you see instead of madison square garden it's madison cube garden they go yeah. there several times throughout the show yeah like i i, I like stuff like that i like yeah, 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 getting to explore this under city that is this it's not working but there's still people that live there and they're all these like mutated monsters and and stuff like that um it's just it's 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 interesting to get to explore that and then like like we we do l- l- later on with the fancy restaurant that's in the cave oh, yeah, um, yeah. Like that whole thing was neat. And then they, you know, they go in the future and they go in the past and the, 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 the cave is still there. Um, it's just it's it's neat to get to explore that space and have it feel like an actual space. Um, yeah, that not only you can relate to, but you can see in the background of uh, other pieces and, and stuff like that. Just like, oh, OK. I remember that place that they back yeah. in that episode, they did yeah. this thing over there and it just it f- fills out that world. So I enjoyed mm-hmm. that a, a lot. Uh, I wanted to mention something about the underground mutants. When we first meet Leela, she grew up in an orphanage and she never knew her parents. And being a, a cyclops with her one big eye, nobody else looks like her. And she believed her whole life. I must be an alien. I don't know what planet I'm from. And it's a co- she operates under that assumption for several seasons until we find out she's not an alien. She is a mutated human. Her mm. parents are from that underground uh, mutant uh, civilization. And they sent their baby up to the the above world with the hopes that she may have a better life. I gotcha. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So there's another piece of something that truly does develop as the show goes on and then you you know, meet her parents you see them briefly in in meanwhile they bring them up to the wedding like her mm-hmm. dad it's got like a vertical mouth and her mom has like tentacles for arms <laughs> good stuff good stuff yeah um i i, I just I, I think the emotional aspect of this one really works because it's not 
a downer that the episode ends on, but it is this like gut punch of this just this like solemn like oh i had everything wrong here Mm -hmm. but it's also kind of cool that like hey he named his son after me like huh like he just has to sit with that for a bit we weren't enemies uh, after all yes it was good it was good Uh, indeed and speaking of fry's family our next episode is roswell that ends well where uh Fry, Leela, Bender, the professor, and Dr. Zoidberg are viewing some special, like, solar eclipse out there in the Planet Express ship floating in space. And Fry puts a Jiffy Pop bag in the microwave. So he microwaves metal, and that interacts. So that, like, makes the microwave blow up and interact with these cosmic rays. And it's some sort of freak event that sends them back in time to Roswell for the Roswell incident. And they realized the Roswell yeah. incident was us. The spaceship <laughs> that they think they're found, that they found is parts of Bender, the alien. Zoidberg they think they found is, is the alien. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Fry's like, my grandpa was like stationed at an army base around here. I can go meet him. And the episode is him trying to prevent his <laughs> grandfather from dying. Cause he keeps walking into fatal events. And Fry doesn't want himself to disappear from the timeline. Or even so he's like trying not to save so his grandpa. fatal events. The, the, the first time right. we see him, he like tackles him out of the road. Be like, watch out. You're about to get run over. Yeah. And then we see the car that's on the road. And it's like way back behind. It turns out <laughs> like a, 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 another street. It's nowhere near him. He was in mm-hmm. zero danger. <laughs> he's just mm-hmm. like, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> And then we find out that uh, when his grandpa does die, Fry realizes, then who's my grandpa? And he realizes it must be him. Like he accidentally like, oh, sleeps I with just his grandma. Slept, yeah, with my grandpa. <laughs> right, because he realizes if my grandpa's dead, uh, you must. He's like, maybe I have the wrong people. Maybe this isn't my grandma after all. And he sleeps with her. And then he realizes it was her and he is his own grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this was the one that I I I knew the contents of or like the the ramifications of, uh, but also had not seen this this one. This is like if you know anything about Futurama, you probably yes. know that he's his own grandfather. Um, and so yeah, it, it was n- nice to finally get to see this one because like once they time tr- traveled. And he started to mention his grandfather. I was like, oh, I bet this is the one where he finds out that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I enjoy, enjoyed this one a lot. I, I like the, um, the like I feel like this was also kind of a trope of some sci fi time travel mm-hmm. stuff where uh, mm-hmm. not not n- not the grandfather pa- paradox stuff, but the like it turns out we were the event like the famous oh, uh, yeah. event that. Yeah, uh, yes. I, I like stuff like that. That's always it, it interesting to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and they they make it out. They escape, but then he's just haunted with the knowledge that is uh, he is his own grandfather. <laughs> right. And I like the horror of seeing his grandfather uh, get involved in all these dangerous situations from like possibly being run over and run over by a car, falling on a bayonet, just <laughs> It's like one of his duties is like kitchen duty. He's like, I've been working with raw chicken. Yum. Finger licking good. Like everything yeah. down to food poisoning could kill this man before he is able to sire Fry's father. So Fry's trying to stop all that from happening. At one point, he's talking to his grandfather. Like they go to the diner where the, the woman who is supposedly his grandma works. And Fry's grandpa says, yeah, she's my sweetheart. But do you ever think you're just going with girls because you're supposed to? <laughs> and the the joke being, what if this man is gay? And then Fry's like, you can't be right now. You can't <laughs> yeah. be because I need you to have sex with her and make my dad so that I exist. And I think this, <laughs> the story does a good job of it not being homophobic. Just right. please, there cannot be a single obstacle to me being born. I need to exist, please. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that that one is a blast. I I had fun with that one. It's it's also neat to see these very like f- f- futuristic sci-fi characters then interact with things from the past when they do all of these time travel antics um yes. to just see zoidberg in the midst of all this stuff and just not understand that like he looks different to them like they haven't yeah. discovered aliens yet it just hasn't clicked with him and so right. he's just being himself being like hello there god i i can't do a Z- zoidberg <laughs> uh, right but he's like he's just trying to be like what should we talk about today <laughs> right <laughs> like he, he has no idea or he, like he gets like captured by all these secret agents and he's like what are we doing after this i'm up for anything <laughs> <laughs> right yeah it's it's almost sexual for him in a weird way he's just, he just wants a friend that is the character of zoidberg is sure. that he's yes. perpetually yeah. like a gross lonely weirdo who desperately wants a friend which is then why down the road when he switches bodies with Farai, he's always like, oh, boy, I have a friend with Bender. Right. <laughs> and like, yes, he tries to like s- s- sidestep into the kitchen and be like, I'll, I'll make some food or something. Right. <laughs> like, that's what friends <laughs> yes, do. Let's go to the apartment where we live together every day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, so he he's just oblivious as to what is happening. Uh, Farai is trying to make things go the way mm. he thinks they should yes. go, and then he's the one that just messes everything up. And then the professor just kind of be being there. I felt like he, I I, I don't want to say he felt useless in that episode, but he felt. Th- more like the parent in the sense of just like, oh, no, everything yeah. is going wrong. What do I do? How do I get everyone back that's, here? That's uh, often his role. Yeah. Is the leader right, yeah. as the the person who's he's both gets them into trouble and tries to keep them in line with my experiment went wrong. But never mind that you guys need to stop screwing up. Let, listen to what I'm telling you. Indeed. Indeed. But yeah. Good stuff with that one. Uh, on to the I next. picked the sting. The sting is, yeah. I think, my personal favorite episode of the series. I think this one is so sweet. It's funny and it's kind of eerie in like a twisty little Twilight Zone way. Yeah. Talk to me. In this one, the the crew has to go on a mission to a a planet of these giant bees who like make this special honey. And the professor gives them this mission like, you guys just need to go on this ordinary mission to collect ordinary honey. And they're like, oh, that doesn't sound so hard. And then he says, this is no ordinary honey. <laughs> it's, it's like all these death bees that'll attack you. So Fry and Leela and Bender go up there. They try and get the honey. And uh, a giant bee like goes to sting Leela. And Fry jumps in front of her and says, you want her? You're going to have to go through me. And then, like, Leela wakes up after she thinks she's been stung. She's like, oh, I just got poked. The stinger went right through Fry. Fry is dead. And the episode is her dealing with the fact that Fry is dead. And then she has these dreams where he's still alive and he's still talking to her. And she's like, these mean something. I think he's really not dead. Like, I think we, like, we buried a living body or something like that. Yeah. So she's so paranoid. She's trying to figure out what's real what really happened? Like Fry comes to her in a dream and is like, I left a special gift for you in my locker. I didn't get a chance to give it to you before we went on that mission. And she like goes to his locker and Bender has already sold everything. And he's like, Nope, got rid of everything. Nothing left. Just this. And he like pulls the thing out of his like abdomen storage container. And it's like exactly the thing Fry in the dream told Leela was going to be there. She's like, see, how could I know this? He must be alive. He had to tell me that for me to know this. And they're like, no, he probably told you before and in your grief you forgot and now you just remembered and you think it's new information. Yeah. He's dead, Leela. He's dead. And she's just having this mental breakdown and then eventually realize all the time like Fry is like talking to her in this like dream state. And at the end of the episode you realize the stinger went through Fry. He got none of the poison. 
<clears throat> it did hit Leela. Leela has been poisoned, but whatever this like bee venom is, she's in a coma in the hospital. She wakes up and Fry has been at her bedside talking to her the whole time. Like, yeah. I need you to wake up because you're uh, you're injured here in our real life and you are in a coma. Yeah, it it almost feels like the turning point for Layla to kind of realize mm. that she is in love with him. Um, yeah, it, it, it to 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 her in her fever dream, whatever it might be, seems more like uh, you don't know what you've got until it's g- g- gone mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. thing. But yeah, it is her subconscious being like no matter what happened, like, hey, you're you're thinking about him. Like, he's the one that saved mm-hmm. you. He's always been there. He is kind of sweet. It's kind of dumb, but he's always been there, right? Um, yeah. And yeah, it felt like that middle turning point of just like, I think you do actually like him. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I, I thought this one was a good one because... I I feel like every sitcom always needs to have a good like drug trip episode ah, yeah. or, or like dream sequence episode um just for the 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 fun of the like weird things you can do yeah. and the like what's real what's not do you w- want to mm-hmm. play with the like fan expectations of certain relationships or certain things yeah. that they they that they have their like head ca- cannons uh with so yeah i i thought this one was good and i think another example of just yeah how sweet fry is and how loyal he is to just be there constantly and yes. not talk and it ends with them being like you need a shower it's like yeah you too <laughs> i love that joke i think it is truly so sweet that he's been there by her side the entire time again like to the detriment of his own self-care sort of the single-minded almost dumbness of fry is present in there and i love that it's the the fact that both of them smell that yeah if you've been waiting by somebody's bedside for two weeks while she's in a coma and if you've been in a coma for two weeks like maybe you've been sponge bathed but like both of you your hygiene regimens have suffered or or because he was there, the nurses couldn't get in to do the sponge oh, maybe. that thing, right? He's like, no, Who I will not leave her. <laughs> Bro, yeah, knows, I yeah. like that it's both of them. The, fa- the even-handedness of that joke is such a nice symbol <laughs> for, like, what a relationship needs to be. Like, you're in it together, all things are equal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I There's a really interesting moment in this episode where it comes back from a commercial break and Bender is just on fire and then everybody (laughs) else in the crew rushes in with a fire extinguisher to like extinguish the fire and he's like phew and then he pulls like another cigar and lighter out of his chest compartment and like lights up again (laughs) like it's so abrupt it's so surreal in the context of everything dreamy that's happening in that episode. I really like that moment. It's just another thing that makes everything sort of unnerving here. I think this episode does a great job of you're an audience member watching a sitcom. Of course you believe the main character isn't dead, but you don't know exactly what's happening. You can tell something's wrong, but it's not exactly clear on exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. I think the show or maybe it's because I saw this episode when I was pretty young and I can't go back to my mindset. Like if I was watching this for the first time now, maybe I could catch on better to what the game is. But when I was like 12 or 13, I couldn't. So so it's really like I'm in this with Leela. I don't know what's happening. (laughs) Yeah. um, I I, I think on top of all of that, there's some interesting lower in in this mm-hmm. i don't know if the show explores or not but the idea that uh the professor had a crew before them and i think like, that has come up in other contexts one they all one line that died. actually really means something is when they are uh having that funeral ceremony for fry and mm-hmm. amy's trying to comfort leela and pats her on the shoulder and says He's walking on sunshine now. 
Yeah. Do you know the episode about the dog? I don't think so. Oh, there's an episode called Jurassic Bark that is like infamously tragic where uh, the, there's some like old New York archaeologists that find like remnants of the society where, where Fry lived and they find uh-huh. this like petrified fossilized dog. And Fry's like, that was my dog. I like adopted this like street dog. He was my buddy. And like every day the the dog would like wait outside the pizza shop where he worked and he would go out on his deliveries and come back and the dog would be there. Um, and he would there's a scene of like him biking along, delivering pizzas with the dog trotting behind him. And they're, they're mm-hmm. singing. He's singing Walking on Sunshine. The dog's kind of barking along. And then the episode ends with. Fry's going to like use some machine to like resurrect his fossilized dog. And he's like, you know what? I was with this dog for such a short amount of time. He probably had a great life after I left, after I got frozen. I'm going to let him live with those memories. Like he probably belonged to somebody else. Like maybe this isn't my dog anymore. And then we see a flashback of that dog waiting outside the pizza Mm. shop for years for a Fry that never came home. Yeah. It's so sad. It is heartbreaking. <laughs> right. It's like one of the most infamous I say, episodes of Futurama. And it's very notable. But I'm like, that's maybe like too sad to like throw into the selection. Like that's an episode that almost hits you too hard. Like there's yeah. nothing redemptive about that episode. I think maybe they do redeem it in some way in one of the later seasons. Like they through all their time travel mishaps, I think they do correct it so that the dog, his name's Seymour Butts. He's named after a prank call. Uh, th- yep. That Seymour does get a, or maybe his name's Seymour Asses. Or little Seymour does get a better ending at some point, I think. But anyway, the the line about he's walking on sunshine now is a direct tie to that episode. I gotcha. <laughs> so there's a lot okay. of continuity here in Futurama that, if you watch the whole thing, you see all these different connection points. Right. But if you don't, if you haven't seen it, like that line still plays. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, like, it, yeah. Like I, I kind of took that as like, maybe it was one of his favorite songs or like there was an episode between him and Layla on a date or something like that, where that song is somehow involved or who knows what. Um, but yeah, I, I like that l- l- line did stand out. Um, but yeah, there's just some some interesting tidbits in there about the past. And yeah. like, and we had like there was a crew before us and they all died on this mission, like trying to get the mm-hmm. honey. They find the like black box recording yes. and it's the, them all like screaming in pain as they're being stung. By all of th- all of these <laughs> killer bees. Um, <laughs> one yeah. one final bit in this episode is that during that funeral scene, Pender is crying and saying, "I always used to shout, kill all humans,' which is one of his his catchphrases: kill all humans, destroy all humans, stuff a robot says. So mm-hmm. I always used to say, kill all humans, but then I'd whisper, except one. Fry was that one." Which is very sweet and then very true. Like they don't hit on it often, but those two do have a very deep bond with each other, Fry and mm-hmm. Bender. And I like that later it's recontextualized as this was all in Leela's mind. I think it's nice that their bond is so deep that Leela sees it and knows not just how sure, sad she yeah. would be, but like how sad Bender would be if Fry wasn't there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Good stuff. Let's move mm-hmm. on now. To the next one. We move on to the Comedy Central era with the late Philip J. Fry, an episode where the professor builds a time machine that only goes forward. Uh, and he makes Fry and Bender test it with him. And Fry is like supposed to get out the door and go to meet Leela for a birthday dinner because he was late and like missed the whole thing for taking her out to lunch. And he's like, I'll make it right. Let me take you out to dinner tonight. And then he gets wrapped up in testing this experiment and the time machine that is only supposed to go forward like a minute or two at a time to test it. It accidentally goes forward decades into the future. And the professor's like, I don't know how to make a backwards time machine. We just have to keep going forward until some future civilization does figure out how to make a backwards time machine. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting one to just see them go further and further in the future and their their both resign to that fate as well as their like them just being more and more like I don't want to be here stuck with you three, right? Or like you you two. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. And cuz cuz yeah, they end up getting to a future that does have a backwards time machine, but because they didn't let Bender stay in the part of the future that was like a bunch of like sexy robots or what have you. Uh, he's yeah. now upset and is like, well, if I can't have what I want, then you can't have what you want. So he hits, <laughs> hits the, the, the thing that they go even further in the, so f- in the, f- in the future. Um, and yeah, and the next time they stop, they're like, they've seen like the heat yeah. of the universe. And they're just like, well, now we're stuck. Um, yes. So this is it. We just have to like hit the forward button until we die of starvation, I yeah. guess. Right. Who knows? Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's when they discover it's all a big loop that. It, yes. after a bit it all sucks into a black hole and then a new big bang right um yeah and then they're just like oh this is perfect we can get there right on time then like yeah. it never happened and they they finally get there i, I, I think it happens twice they they go in right. a big like loop the twice. first time like they're like they're seconds away from getting back to the time when they left and like the professor accidentally like jerks the thing wrong and they have to do another loop around and then the yeah. second loop, he like stops and kills Hitler. And on the third loop, he's like, don't slow down. I'll just shoot Hitler out the window. Window. <laughs> and then he misses and kills someone else. <laughs> I forget who. Roosevelt. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, which both of those seem to have no impact on the, the history. Like they just, <laughs> right. that was didn't. just jokes. Yeah. Uh, but but then, yeah, they did the, the thing where they got back to the right time, but the universe was like 10 feet lower than where they were. So like the other characters were right below them. And then the 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 ship that they're on just smashes them and kills them. So they're like, oh, perfect. So we don't have to worry right. about closed a paradox. Loop. Right. Yeah. Closed <laughs> loop. Uh, which just it. This is one that makes me think about, like, what exactly is the timeline for Futurama? Because you do have the, like, okay, he's his own grandfather, but this one also then, like, went through, like, two or three cycles of what the universe actually is. And then he killed <laughs> himself in this one. So is he really the like what what's happening? It's just it's so complicated. There's, it it picks and chooses its battles with logic. Don't worry about the timeline. But in the next episode, we talk about where there's complicated math. That is real math that they did. All the Harvard grads that work on this show trying to figure out <laughs> this fake sci-fi problem. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, I, I I just thought that it it was an interesting thing that they they like okay he did this time loop here but then there's this loop here so does that erase that one I guess but and yeah it's just this big old jumbled mess of you know what who cares <laughs> the important part of the story is that because he gets roped into testing this experiment that the professor says is only going to take a minute and then he gets stuck in the future Fry misses Leela's birthday dinner and earlier that night bender was like guys hedonism bot is finally settling down but he's having one last rager and fry's like oh boy i'd i'd love to go but you know he's like i'd, I'd want to go but no i agreed i will take leela to dinner yeah uh and so later when he doesn't show up and there's a news report that everything went wrong that there was some huge explosion or disaster at hedonism bot's bachelor party he's like I looked around and there were piles of bodies everywhere. And then there was the explosion. I love <laughs> hedonism, but she believes Fry is dead. Like he he went to that party and he died. And she just then like there's no professor or bender either. Like they all went and they all died. So you see the rest of Planet Express kind of try and serve 
survive in its absence. And then Leela as captain takes over the business and it thrives. And years from now, she ends up marrying Hubert. Hubert is the professor's clone of himself. That's that little boy. I no longer remember if he meant to make a like kid clone of himself or if he was trying to make an identical clone and accidentally came out a kid. I forget if it's intentional within the story that he made a like 10 year old boy, but that's sure, that yeah. is. And so that's why she kind of starts to look at him that way years later when he's an right. adult, because he is related to Fry. Uh, that's the same haircut. So you see right? Her, yeah. right. Do you see her trying to replicate either turn her back in romance altogether or replicate what she had with Fry. And while he's in the ship, while he's in the time machine, Fry's got this video greeting card that he's recording a birthday message for Leela on. And then like the ship hits some sort of time glitch. The card flies out the window and it flies into like the, through a time hole to the exact time when Leela is. So Leela gets this card and realizes much like luck of the Fryish, I've been mad at him for years because of something yeah. that wasn't his fault. He never meant to skip out on me. He didn't die. He got lost in time. He's stuck in the future somewhere. And so she goes to the cavern on the green restaurant, takes her laser gun, writes a message to him in the cavern, knowing that it'll like the water will drip and like form stalag tights or slag mites, who knows, in, in the ground that in the future, if he comes there, he could see it. I, I which think is stalag so mites. Sweet. Because stalactites have to hold on tight to the ceiling so that they don't fall. I think. Floor I think rocks. That's how She's they... making floor rocks. <laughs> She's making floor rocks. <laughs> <laughs> which when you think about it, she had to write that message backwards so that he yeah. can read it, which is such skill. Leela is uh, so competent. I, I love that Leela is so strong and so tough. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> She's it's got so many skills, Leela. Uh, so in the future, he finds that message. I love the the permanence of that message. I love that recurring theme in Futurama about these little pieces of emotion and of human connection that can survive for centuries against war and destruction and the rages of time. Yeah. One simple love letter from one person to another can last that long. And yeah. you always have another chance to go back and like make up for your mistakes. Uh, I think this episode's very sweet, and I, I really like its specific take on time travel. You have to yeah. keep going forward until somebody else invents a way to go back. Right. I was watching another show recently that did a similar thing about, like, oh. leaving a message for someone at a certain time. Um, not the same situation. It's not like a heartfelt romantic message or anything like that but there's two characters who are trapped in this building and there's a bunch of people after them all with guns and stuff like that but they know that this building is still here in the future timeline um and so they write this message that they are trapped in the building at this specific time so send someone back he here mm. to help us and they don't know if it'll work or not but that's that's the thing they like write this message on the wall and yes someone comes and saves them and it's just like oh that's so cool <laughs> but yeah here we have the the, the heartfelt romantic yeah. ver ver version so mm -hmm. good stuff with that i this episode also has one of my favorite jokes, which is when Fry gets the video greeting card and Amy is explaining to him how it works. Like, yeah, you just record a nude video message to give to somebody. And he says, does it have, does to, it be have to be nude? She's like, huh, that never occurred to me. <laughs> Great. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Wait, so you have to put clothes Amy on to record this right. message? Oh, the instructions didn't say that. <laughs> Amy is such a rich, multifaceted character, and I love how much they get out of Amy in The Prisoner of Benda, which is the next episode we're going to talk about, which is a body switch episode. Yeah. You get to see Bender in Amy's body, and then you get to see a, a robo janitorial bucket in Amy's body. And just how much the show can, like, 
just on the animation alone, like even if you put this on mute, you could tell that character is not that character. Somebody else is inhabiting them. That right, is yeah. Leela and the professor's body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's move on to that one then. So mm-hmm. th- th- this is the one that has th- this whole made up math. Yes. Yes. Harem, right? All right. So ex- explain this. So. You've mentioned this to me in the past that there was an episode of of Futurama that invented a brand new math theorem equation. I don't know exactly what this is, but yes, I and I don't know math. I don't know what that means. (laughs) I don't know how many theorems there are, if it is a big idea to make a new theorem, but it sure sounds impressive. And that is part of the pedigree of the show. Same thing with this and simpsons even going back to like like national lampoon is from harvard there's this Mm -hmm. connection between real smarty brains and writing like really incredible comedy uh there's a lot of harvard grads on simpsons and on futurama like i think futurama's had like actual like phds working on it in different capacities there's so much real knowledge here that i find so impressive and in this episode uh the professor and Amy, who is his like lab assistant, they have made a, a mind switching machine. Uh, so they switch bodies with each other, bodies, minds, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then they are like, this isn't working. Let's switch back. And they can't switch back. After you've made a switch, you can't switch between that same body anymore. So they're like, we need a third uh, blank body. Like we need a, a some third party to come in here so like if we can't switch i can switch to this person and then they can switch to you but then we need somebody else because then you can switch back to me and like that's how it goes is that people keep switching bodies with each other and they can't switch back so they have to bring in somebody else they have to keep adding people and robots and aliens to this list of people and then at the end the harlem globetrotters come in to do some math and figure out no we can get this done with only two extra bodies and that's us these two harlem globetrotter players which (laughs) because of course that's what the harlem globetrotters do math (laughs) yes yes like they did the sort of classic like gilligan's island scooby-doo harlem globetrotters what are you doing here (laughs) sort of episode ages ago where it was established that the harlem globetrotters are all like geniuses amazing play basketball so good they're (laughs) There are frequently times when it's like they call in a council of scientists and Harlem Globetrotters are there. (laughs) I'm like, this must be so random to you just watching this episode if you don't know that was one of the running bits of lore in the series that people had to call upon the Harlem Globetrotters. No idea about (laughs) that. I actually forgot that this was the the one that you said, like, oh, they invented this new math thing. Mm -hmm. And then I was like... Oh, Melissa, putting in the episode about the Harlem Globetrotters, knowing <laughs> Harlem that Globetrotters, I've been to a Harlem dancing. Globetrotters gig game. <laughs> yeah, and I got the, the two cotton candy, right? It's classic whatnots yes. <laughs> that Melissa is tipping her hat <laughs> to towards here. But no, that it's actual, actual yeah. Futurama yeah. C- craziness. Yeah, and they've written this whole thing like set it math on a chalkboard and you you can pause it and look at it and like that all checks out like the writer did all of this math to figure out if you were in this situation how would you solve it interesting and i think that's just tremendous i don't know what other show can claim to have done this and yeah so essentially it's just an equation or what have you to be like hey if you had to keep rotating bodies What's the exact yes. number of people you would yeah. have to have to make it work? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff with that. We do yeah, get a lot of wild. We get a lot of body switch fun. It's Fry and Leela are an item at this point, mm-hmm. and they the, the episode starts with her looking at her eye, and she's like, "My eye is so round, so hideously round." Fry, would you love me even if I? And he's like, it's no, it looks fine. And like, they have this whole argument with like, do you only like me because I'm attractive? If I let myself go in some way, would you still be with me? And so that culminates with them switching bodies to where she's in the professor and he's in Zoidberg, a very (laughs) old man and a weird lobster alien. 
and they like are like playing chicken with each other, like going out on a date, like just being as gross as, as possible in their respective ways. And then they do end up sleeping with each other in those bodies. And they're like, yeah, that was nice. Which is <laughs> <laughs> nice to see their relationship tested in so many different wacky sci-fi ways. Like, do these two souls love each other regardless of what forms they are in? It is weird that they are in the forms of their uh, immediate friends, family, and coworkers. But yeah, so <laughs> it's not the this angle here. Is, is almost the exact same situation as Wonder Woman 84, which I don't I did like. think of that, yes. <laughs> right, it is the exact thing like, oh, why they made Wonder Woman rapes someone in this, what is happening? That's not Wonder Woman. No, don't do this. Uh, yeah, it's the exact same situation, essentially, in, in this. So if you think about it like that, yeah, technically they didn't get consent, all of that, that stuff. It's not good, but I think... The way they frame it in this is a lot better than what they did with yes. Wonder Woman to be like, like you said, it is about do these two souls truly love each other yeah. no matter what they look like and what they did with that arc makes a lot more sense. Um, but yeah, it's still the, the like, huh? OK, so. I, Zoidberg and pr the professor had sex. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I, That's I, weird. I feel like this episode would be, it doesn't feel terribly dated, but I feel like it would be written a little bit differently today. The, Probably. Uh, the, the focus on consent is more on like Amy. It starts with Amy and the professor switching bodies. Cause they, cause the professor's like, I'm so old. I wish I was young again. And Amy's like, I used to have such a problem eating. Like I would eat, just eat and eat and eat all the time. And I, I wish I could be in a different body where I feel like I've got more allowance to do that again. And so you see her going through different people uh, and their different relationships with Amy is making me fat now, which is it's a little touchy, but I can say as a fat person, I did laugh many times. I like when she's just eating a stick of butter and she's like freaking out about how out of control the body switching is become. And she's like, what do I do? Do I eat more butter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, th yeah, there are some some fat j jokes in in that that, like you said, I think would be written differently. Um, mm. But I I I think that it, it like it's also kind of part of the joke that sh when she switches with uh, the professor, she tries to eat all of this stuff and realizes she can't. Because he's so mm. old that he can't like yeah, right. process this, this stuff. Yes. So she she now needs to switch with someone else. And so, yeah, she eventually right. finds her way to yeah. Layla and then can finally do it. And she eats all of the stuff and then is this like golem like creature just <laughs> hoarding all of the food and butter yeah. and, and just like, what is happening? Right, she switches with Leela because Leela wants to be the professor as like a test to fry, like not am I in the body of your great great times a million? Do you nephew, still love me boss, if I looked like, like this? If, yeah, yeah, right. If I was an old man, let's pretend it's just any old man. W would you still love me? And there's also a joke about how she wants the senior discount at the movies, and she says, "I hate having to pay fourteen dollars to watch Nicolas Cage solve things." <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see her later on the phone, like, "Yeah." And then Nicolas Cage found out that the real treasure all along was family. <laughs> yes, I'll hold. <laughs> <laughs> Which that that scene in particular reminds me a lot of a scene in the B -B 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 Bear season two. Oh. Without spo spoiling things, there is a character on the phone just spilling their entire life stu stu story, like very like intimate details and stuff. They're emotional. They're inside a bathroom, like heading down by a toilet. Like you think like, oh, this character is in a bad place. And then, yeah, it's it's the like. But yeah, no, uh, the it's just that the water keeps coming up from the the, the bowl here. So you can be here at six to fix that, right? Right. Yeah. And it's just it's like you're Always spilling good. your whole life to the plumber. <laughs> that, that. Right. It's it's the sir, this is an Arby's of it. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. There's another exactly. great joke in this episode at the beginning when Amy is talking about how she's tired of having to like feed monkeys or whatever into all their science experiments and she's ready to try 
This is your begin human trials. If that's on bingo this year, this is when you cross off begin human trials. She's like, I'm tired of having to deal with heaps of dead monkeys. And the professor says, science cannot move forward without heaps. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. And then we get um, the story of Scruffy, the janitor. And yeah. he's got this like robotic wash bucket. And like they they need to bring another robot in because like the benders in Amy's body and like the the bucket. He needs to tell this like robot prince that he can be in the body of another robot. You haven't even mentioned his own like body the, the actual professor's plot in it and ran of, away. Right. Of what's happening in you this don't episode. Need to. <laughs> and then like, so he puts the robo prince in like the body of the bucket and he's like, yes, I'm Bender. And then Zoidberg is in Fry's body and he's like, yes, I'm Fry. And those two try and go off and live a normal life with each other. But like, the bot, the soul of the robot bucket gets put in Amy's body. And Amy <laughs> puts on this lingerie and approaches Scruffy with this blank expression and this stiff robotic pose. It's such funny animation. Everything they do with Amy's figure especially really works in this episode. It's great. <laughs> like, yeah. And then she, she, the, the robot bu- uh, bucket approaches Scruffy and is like, Scruffy, I have always loved you. In this form, we can be together. And Scruffy's like, no, I would. It'd be fun for now, but then I'd always know. And the bucket's like, we could, if we go away to another city, we can be. We can be anybody. Anyone. <laughs> yeah. Scruffy's like, you leave now before I beg you to stay. And then he like curls up in a ball and cries. It's so great because the the uh, other times that we see him, he's always like laying down on the job or he just finished mm-hmm. doing something. So he's like, I'm yeah. on b- 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 break. And he's always looking at some porn magazine. Yeah, of like, like zero G jugs. Yeah, long boobed <laughs> something, right? Long boobed aliens or, or something right. like that. And I think I think one of the magazines is like asses monthly. <laughs> Sign me up, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but 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 like he's this character who's just kind of there we don't know much mm-hmm. about him and then yeah in this it it just seems like this flood of info of like oh th- there's been this forbidden <laughs> love like deep down i'll always know that you you were just janitorial equipment right i can't yes. no uh. <laughs> and it just it's not what you expect in the midst of the a and b plot that's happening mm-hmm. <laughs> in 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 this um and it's just yeah it's it it felt like we got this little small arc for for him that's like oh i'm I'm actually kind of happy that he's like he's expressed his love but also is like you know what that's not the right thing i have some integrity right (laughs) yeah and that's the the benefit of this show going on for so long and like being canceled and being rebooted again is that they it seems like the show learns to never really take anything for granted like we can do something with Scruffy the janitor. He -hmm. never becomes like a full part of the cast. There's not a Scruffy centric episode, but he will get these little bits like this. There is room for everybody, even in a jokey way to have an emotional beat. That's such a strength of this show. Yeah, absolutely. It's so efficient. And this takes us to the most recent finale an episode yeah. called Meanwhile. And the the equivalent of like the Bart Simpson chalkboard gag from the beginning of like the opening credits to every Simpsons episode where he's always writing something different. And like the big like splash title card for the show Futurama, there's always a message written at the bottom like mm-hmm. Futurama. If you don't watch it, who will? <laughs> Someone else Futurama, will, yeah. fun for the whole family. Like it's always some sort of a joke. And for this final episode, scrawled in blood, it says, Avenge us! <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, There's another... Yeah, they, ev- th- we haven't even mentioned the opening c- credits of, of right. Futurama, because they also do something that I... 
have always thought was neat is that like in the futuristic mm-hmm. heady they have there is a tv screen that ends up playing some like old cartoon and every single yes. e- episode it is a new cartoon t- 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 yeah. that they show and they all- always give credit to like what that cartoon was yeah. back in 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 in, in the, 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 the day uh and it's just some neat little bit that they have in there yeah. and just huh neat yeah they're just That's picking all. some old like little like three seconds of a public domain cartoon to play on a big screen before it flashes Futurama. Yeah. yeah it's a real look at like the history of animation in yeah. this animated show that is about the future. Yeah. Yeah. Neat stuff. Um, but yes, please continue on. I, Meanwhile, there's another running joke that this episode does a really great touch on, which is so many episodes feature the professor bursting in to tell the rest of the planet express crew Good news, everyone. So I invented this thing. And like there's an episode, I think when he, he comes in and he's talking to somebody else who's in his body in Prisoner of Benda, where he says, good news, me. And in this final yeah. episode, he comes out and just says, G-N-E. <laughs> just, just abbreviates it. I think that gag is very good. <laughs> Yeah, so for this one, he has invented yet another time travel device. Uh, this mm. one will only set you back 10 seconds. Uh, and, and the can... little clicker needs 10 seconds to recharge itself. So you can't yeah. just infinitely go back 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. But you can relive that same like 10 yes. second loop over and over um, and that's it. I, I like the, the, the fact that they've done so many time travel episodes. There's probably more in here, I'm yes. sure. Um, yeah. But it, at, at least in the three that we saw, uh, each one felt different. It's not like, hey, let's get that one d- device back out and use that, to the, which they might do at some point in there again i haven't mm. seen enough but it felt there's, like they were other trying stuff that does recur. yeah different things um which I, I like when they like give themselves like a set of rules like oh, okay you can only go back 10 seconds yes. it needs 10 seconds to recharge so you can't do this you could do that here's the only uh, other thing there's this like rock like device that if you get inside you will be excluded from that 10 second loop so you can kind of watch what's happening um like i I like that they give themselves parameters of this is how this thing works and then they go off like okay here's now what we do with that um so yeah and I, i i think this one culminates in fry trying to ask layla to marry him uh, there's mm-hmm. some antics that he and Bender get up yes. to with robbing a, a diamond store, <laughs> a, a, ju- a jewelry yeah. store to to build this mecha diamond, right? This big <laughs> like extra thing, which almost looks like the uh, the atomic bomb thing that we saw in Oppenheimer, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? So it's made out of all these little like trapezoids. Yeah, right. Yeah, I like that the episode starts with they return to the the site of their first ever delivery which is a moon mm-hmm. theme park called luna park which is like on coney island uh and like there's an accident and like leela almost dies and these paramedics come in and they're like yeah mr fry like hey, your your wife she's in trouble and he's like she's not my wife and like he realizes after this moment of mortal peril he's like if you almost die again i want you to almost die as my wife yeah. <laughs> like, I, I think that's, that's how very- romantic It's so funny and so sweet that, like, he wants to be able to say, my wife is in trouble. I have to save my wife. I want my wife to be okay. Aspirational. Uh, Yeah, so he decides to propose to her. Exactly. He he wants to propose to her and use this time device to, like, loop the time. Like, he proposes to her at dinner, and then he's like, hold on. I've developed the perfect scenario for where I want to hear you say yes. Meet me here at this time at the top of the tallest building in the city, the Vampire State Building, which is new. I don't think that's an existing joke building in this series. I think it's for this episode, this preposterously tall building. 
He's like, meet me there at, at the top floor at sunset. If you say yes, I want that moment to last forever. And he's been going back in time so much that he doesn't realize that his watch is wrong. Mm-hmm. Like he thinks she didn't come. She doesn't want to marry me. And he's like, I can't live with this anymore. And he jumps off the building. And as he's plummeting to his death, he sees her walk up and he realizes, oh, my God, I had the time wrong. She does want to marry me. And so he tries to, like, reset the button so he can go back to when he's still, like, on the balcony. But he's been falling for so long. Every time he hits the button, he's just at a different point in his plummet. Right. Like, he can never get back to the balcony. I think that's a really interesting challenge of how do you save Fry from this 10 second loop of just falling through the air? Exactly. I, I was expecting him to like start to like take off his tie and see, see if he could oh. loop that gargoyle that's up there. And mm-hmm. then it's not enough. He has to take off his shirt and do it. And it's not enough. And he has to tell, like, I was expecting him to be like completely naked, like trying to loop himself onto this gargoyle. Um, but no, he, he is just kind of at the mercy of this loop he, here. Um, and eventually it's the, pr- the professor realizes that the world is stuck in this time loop here. Uh, and so he gets everyone into the, the little like rock looking hut. And they just have like 10 seconds at a time have yes. to like, like walk. All right, stop. <laughs> All right, walk. All right, stop. It <laughs> reminds walk. me of Toy stop. Story 2 where the toys yeah. have to fit inside like a fast food trash and like scuttle across the road to get to Al's exactly. toy barn. It's exactly. that energy. It is that exactly. Um, and they make it to the tower. But once the professor steps out, uh, and Fry sees him, he like he ends up j- dropping the device. And so Fry just <laughs> falls and splats and is just this giant puddle of pudding. very gross. Yeah, it is disgusting. And they end up like you end up seeing him splat like five or six times as they try and do other stuff like, OK, well, if we all. Uh, like, oh, we could use Bender's air b- b- bag to mm. save it, like all of this stuff to see, see if they can make it uh, work. Um, and eventually it gets to a point where they've basically saved him, but Harai lands on the device, destroying it. And that sends out this one last kind of shock wave that freezes the whole earth except for him and Layla. Mm -hmm. So they they truly are in this moment forever. Yes. Um and they just kind of think, well, this is it. Like we don't know how to fix this device. So I guess we just have our really long honeymoon by ourselves. Right. And it's it's Mm -hmm lonely it's it's scary it's kind of creepy but they they make the most of it they they go to the beach they play frisbee with a dog that's still attached right to the frisbee um they do all sorts of stuff and go on adventures and they have a, a blast they live a great life um and then I, I guess the day is finally saved at the end here because the professor did step out of the rock thing yeah. when something happened. So he's lost in some time continuum, finally makes it out, fixes the device uh, and sends everyone back to where they were. So um, that's kind of that one there. I, this This episode, I think, is such a remarkable example of a series finale in that it narrows down to just the relationship between two people in this very quiet, intimate way. Yeah. Like, we can't... This is the one relationship that needs a final touch. We don't have a final thing we have to do with Bender or Hermes or anybody else, but, like, we need a final 
story for Fry and Leela. That is the heart of the show. And it's just the two of them in this, just walking around the earth together, like just hand in hand. They go backpack, backpacking across this entirely still earth where like there's no elements anymore. They walk across oceans together. Yeah. You know, the, it, everything is frozen and it's so I remembered this episode that, like that being the whole episode. And I'm surprised that I went back and it's only a couple minutes towards the end. Like mm-hmm. this is such a a striking scenario. It really takes over your brain as being the entirety of the thing. It looms so large. You're like, that must have been 15 straight minutes when it was only like three. Yeah. And like when they're, they're so old. They that climb back up to the forever. top of the Vampire State Building to like drink the champagne that Fry poured however many decades ago. And they're talking about how they are happy that they, with the life they were able to make in this frozen universe, it's just the two of them. And Fry's like, were you ever lonely? And Leela says, I was never lonely, not even for a minute. Which is such a, to go from like the, the first episode that we watched, Parasites mm-hmm. Lost, where he has to do so much to like impress her to she's gotten to the point where she doesn't need a single thing in the universe that isn't him. It's yeah. <laughs> where she can't imagine you know, she would Incredible. miss her parents. She would miss her beloved pet nibbler. You know, she would miss every, there would be a, a longing for the friendship that you had, but n- zeroing in on just these two and that only these two needing only each other. It's, it's such a nice choice. It's so effective. I think this was a really beautiful ending. And if the show never came back, this would be a perfectly fine final note to the thing. Yeah. But like every time they've had to do a finale, it's a good finale. Like the the final episode of the Fox run, the final one of those like interim DVD movies, this final episode, like it's always solid. They always like can find another appropriate ending every time they are given the chance to do so. Yeah. That's that's good stuff. That's mm-hmm. I, I feel like it's difficult to do as well. Yeah. well, well um, I, I like I you, you would think at some point whatever they tried to do would be like, eh, it wasn't as good as the other one or, you know, eh, who knows? But um, yeah, it, it feels like they progress things enough in every relaunch of the show that they yeah. they have something else to work with and like ah this is the 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 one thing that like will be most effective mm-hmm. um so good on them good stuff mm-hmm. welcome back futurama yes welcome to this world of tomorrow indeed indeed yeah that one i i think that last one was my favorite of the bunch I- it's so deeply romantic. It's so special. And I know the, I've mentioned it before, not mm-hmm. to talk too much in detail about this thing, but I recommended it based off of the series finale of The Leftovers. So I did want us to watch it because I know I have told you about it. Yeah. Um, the l- last thing I will say kind of about Futurama here is. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just I. I think it is a show that because it's set in the future is kind of and can be speculative and stuff like that. It Mm -hmm. has that that sci fi like we can do these things like one step removed and have better lessons and and stuff like that. Whereas I mean, this is this is not why I did not like. The Simpsons, and I don't think saying I didn't like The Simpsons is not, mm-hmm. but but like why I liked Futurama better is like I felt The Simpsons was too close. It didn't feel like an escape. It just felt like oh yeah, those are my neighbors uh, next Joe yeah. Joer, uh, and this is like I I can see myself reflected in some of these characters and the situations yeah. they get in, but it's not me. And so, yeah, they, they can have these interesting problems and issues and go about it in certain ways that, that, that like make me think and stuff like that all in the 22 minute situational comedy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So I think there good is good on them. It's it truly does make the most of it being a speculative show that can play with these massive amounts of time. Like mm-hmm. the Simpsons could never do an episode quite like the luck of the fry ish. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, cool. I think that's all I have mm-hmm. to say on Futurama. So let me see here. Yes. I am going to pull up our bingo sheet to see if we have any updates on that. Um, let's see. I'll bring this up on screen here. Okay, we're looking for treasure map, big puddle splash, a mocap character, no time for breakfast, a sex scene set to music, cat and mouse game, a uh, locked room mystery, didn't realize my own strength, arted to death, villain with a pet, conspiracy board. I don't know. Like we, we nest, and we don't, one of the things you have to cross off is spaceship AI. We don't really have that. That's like the one thing the the planet expression doesn't have. It doesn't have its own AI, personality. Like built maybe in, it will. yeah. Or maybe it did for like yeah. one episode that I don't remember specifically. And everything went wrong. Bum, bum, bum. And then Tom Cruise came and punched it, and it was dead. Um, okay, well, yeah, not not much of an update again uh, for mm. for Bingo, but that's okay. Okay. Um, it does get more and more difficult to cross yeah. off squares as we don't have very many left. Um, mm-hmm. So there you go. Melissa, recommendations yes. for people that enjoy Futurama. What else might they like? Of course, there is The Simpsons. Uh, mm-hmm. And I want to mention that we did a special episode, episode 121, summer of 2020. Well, it's September. I guess we were out of summer then. Uh, you and I did a sitcom trade. The first of our sitcom trades, which this episode has been a variation of. You gave mm-hmm. me three episodes of Seinfeld, a show yep. you grew up loving, but I barely knew. And I gave you three episodes of Simpsons, a show I grew up with and you don't know. So that was a fun trade. We did that again with Community and Arrested Development. Mm-hmm. Uh, and with this, it's not a trade. I just gave you seven episodes of Futurama to watch for your own enlightenment. I feel Uh, enlightened indeed. Also in 2020, we did three episodes talking about the entirety of the venture brothers, another personal favorite of mine, an adult swim animated show about a super scientist father who was once a boy adventurer dragging his own twin teenage sons on a series of <laughs> cartoonish adventures across the globe, fighting different supervillains, dealing with the sins of the, the, the past of the Venture family, and, and trying to learn to grow and be their own people. The show lasted seven seasons and uh, was supposed to get an eighth season, but instead they got this finale movie, which as I, I think I mentioned at the beginning, you, you can catch on VOD now or by the time yeah. this episode is released, you can buy on physical media. There's yeah. a very short time span between it coming out digitally and then uh, physically. It's very nice. You can own this disc. You can go out, you can buy it. And then I believe later it will come to Max as part of their Adult Swim collection. Uh, Venture Brothers is another show that is a very successful comedy that's also secretly very emotional with like really great continuity. I just watched this finale movie and there are like really specific hits from the past that like Good. come back in that story in different ways. Uh, that one's very fun. Lots of good genre takes. Uh, sure. It's not quite as hard sci-fi. Neither of those guys who write the show went to Harvard. <laughs> so you're not getting quite <laughs> that much. And then finally, a show that I think is a spiritually a very good match for Futurama is Fringe. Last year, we also did one of our monthly ongoing series on Fringe. We watched all five seasons of that show, which is about uh, the FBI's Fringe division that take on weird sort of metaphysical pseudoscience cases. And it's led by this this FBI agent and this uh, sort of adult old scientist and his son who is like the the only person who can kind of get through to him uh and they just make this weird little family unit like the three of them 
their 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 wonderful lab assistant Astrid, a cow, Gene the yeah. cow, other FBI agents. Like <laughs> it's a sort of motley mix of old man scientist, estranged family relation who's got a romance with this very tough leader of the team and various other associates. And they, they just form this really tight bond. Fringe is a procedural drama, but it does have a good amount of comedy episodes. Like there's one episode that is a, a musical. There's one episode that is they go inside trip. somebody's <laughs> right. There's drug trip episodes. There's an episode where they go inside somebody's mind and it's all a cartoon like yeah. they they really experiment with the format and tone of that show as much as they experiment with anything else. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Um yeah, I of course we can always second the Simpsons. There is the if you want I guess a different flavor of if you don't want the Simpsons and you don't want sci-fi, there's Enchanted. Uh the other yes. I, I think it's on Netflix. Um, I was not a huge mm. fan of that one per- personally, uh, but that is another cartoon by the, the I, I can never Matt say Graining. his last name. Yeah, um, I always want to say Matt Groening, but it's Groening, right? You're Graining. just Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's another ca- cartoon by him. Uh, I'm always a big fan of Bob's burgers i know that's not the sci-fi stuff but they do get up to some interesting antics uh in that show uh you already mentioned community that we did a sitcom exchange Mm -hmm. on that yeah i think community is a great match for this show even though it is less sci-fi on its appearance like it appears to be less sci-fi they do so much just like weird one-off episodes where like oh they're playing dungeons and dragons and then the whole thing turns into this or it's a a christmas episode and they're all claymation or it is some it's it's a show that is so smartly written they have jokes that last over multiple seasons and don't pay off until until like down down the road um like they have in in the first like handful of Hazens, they have someone mention the name Beetlejuice J- yes. once, and then in the next Hazen they mention it once, and in the third Hazen they mention it once. But on that third time when they mention it in the background, there is a guy in a Beetlejuice c- costume that walks by. That if you aren't looking, you, like you you just don't know. But if you know. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, and over three seasons. Yes. This is amazing. Um, but yeah, same kind of weird time travel, weird lore that if you just didn't know or understand, you'd just be like, what is happening in this show? Um, so yeah, I, I would recommend that. Uh, another a- a- anime that I have mentioned a number of times here on uh, the review show is Nichi Jiao. Um, mm-hmm. It is much more a slice of life uh, story, but it is hilarious. Uh, it, it you see a number of groups of different people th- throughout this city, and just kind of the mundane yet absurd stuff that happens to them um and some of these skits are like they 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 take the mundane stuff and just heighten it so much uh for example there's a skit where one of the characters wants to start drinking coffee so they go to to a coffee shop but they've never been to a coffee shop before and so they don't know how to order they don't know what any of the sizes are and just like the anxiety of trying to figure out they're like i want a medium it's like we don't have medium we have like venti or something right and it's just like i, I don't mm. know what that means uh <laughs> they're just like ah. um so yeah there is some sci-fi stuff that happens in that too but it's just kind of chaos um but i i, I would recommend that as like an oddball fit in mm-hmm. with that yes you were about speaking to- of which there is an episode of Futurama called 300 Big Boys where everybody gets a $300 tax refund from something. 
Mm-hmm. The episode's just about how everybody spends that three hundred dollars in various disastrous ways. Amazing. And Fry decides to buy three hundred one dollar cups of coffee. <laughs> and he drinks so much coffee. And there's like a counter in the corner of the screen. By I feel how like I've seen a had. gif from that yes. episode. Is that one where he has like he's face down on the table with the cup of co- coffee? Uh, <laughs> I think so. Something but like at that. The end, I, he I, drinks I don't know. So many cups. The 300th cup of coffee sends him into another plane of existence. He ascends. Amazing. He is glowing. Amazing. He yeah. is powerful now. He has like speed force powers. Great. Love it. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think that's our recommendations mm. for if you like Futurama. Um, but yeah, for next week, we've already kind of mentioned yeah. it. We will be concluding our coverage of The Good Place. We will be watching season four of The Good Place and talking about that, um, which is exciting for the past couple months. We've been yeah. watching that show and now we get to see how it all ends. Um, yes. So, yeah, that that'll be exciting. Melissa. If you want, I have my pitches for the week after that, oh, if you are ready. I would like to have um, those. Yes, I would yeah, I'd love absolutely. to be prepared. Thank you. Indeed. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to go back and do like childhood IPs, like stuff that was popular when we were kids um, and to to read or watch or all of that stuff um, to, just to like, is there a different iteration of those IPs that we have not dived into yet. Um, so I have uh, some comics um, for us to, to p- p- pick out pitch. Number one is the mighty Morphin power Rangers. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think I double check my notes here. I think, yes. So I wanted to, pitch the first three v- 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 volumes of mighty Morphin power rangers by kyle H- 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 higgins uh p- p- published on B- boom studios this is available on comiXology unlimited um and i there's there's a number of other people who worked on on this book including steve orlando uh marjorie scott uh henry per Persietta, Corin Howell, Daniel Bayless. It seems like they had a number of people just like work on the art and the story of all of this here. Um, But the first three volumes, I will read the description for volume one. It says, after escaping Rita Repulsa's mind control, Tommy Oliver, the Green Ranger, joins the Power Rangers to combat the onslaught of evil attacks plaguing Angel Grove. A- any semblance of a normal life is gone for Tommy now. But with his newfound family, there lies hope for a brighter path. Um, yeah, I have heard nothing but great things about Boom mm-hmm. Studios' run on Power Rangers. Uh, these first couple volumes come, uh, I think, just before their first like big event crossover uh book that they did they had a number of power rangers uh like the st- stories being told they had this series i think they eventually had one that was called go go power rangers and then i think they did a few like solo books like here's one for the pink rangers yes. stuff that like one's that good. um but yeah, I, I thought we could at least get started with these first three v- 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 volumes, which collects the first 12 issues. Um, OK, so I figured that would be a good quick read for us to explore. Yeah. And like I said, all on Comixology Unlimited. Um, but yeah, Power Rangers, as you know them and love them, but new stories. Um, so that's pitch number one pitch number two let me see if i can pull up the uh details on this guy this is also available on comiXology unlimited this is teenage mutant ninja turtles we are gonna go back to the originals the original eastman and liard comics um 
Let me look at my notes again here to see which one. So uh, the Ultimate Collection, uh, they have an Ultimate Black and White Collection because the originals actually did not have color. From what I uh, understand, you did not get to mm. uh, understand that Donatello had the purple bandana until later on. I'm wondering now if that was a result of the cartoon like to like make it easier huh. for people to who knows we'll we'll figure all that stuff out down the road but um the ultimate collection volumes one and two cover the first 11 issues um and i think there might be some ancillary material uh in in these here uh, but it says, rediscover the underground roots of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, starting with this special edition. Uh, the first v- v- volume collects issues one through seven, um, along with a R- 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 Raphael one shot by creators Kevin Eastman and Peter Liard. So, Again, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, as you know them and love them. I've never gone back and read the originals. I have not read any kind of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics. I know they have newer stuff that I think was published by IDW um, that has also been like they've done good stories. Um, I think more recently there's been a... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic called The Last Ronin, um, which has Mm. been pretty popular that I think takes place in the future. And there's like only one of them left. uh, And it's this like post-apocalyptic samurai story. Right. Um, I think that's getting turned into a video game, if I'm not mistaken. But Mm. they've had a rich history in comics both in the past and present. Um, So, yeah, they have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the ultimate black and white collection, volume one and two. That is pitch number two. And then for pitch number three, this is not a specific IP. It is not like the Power Rangers or... Ninja Turtles. This book is entitled Future Quest. This is a long. We we went back and we read the Flintstones comics at Ah oh. DC. This is basically what if Hanna Barbera characters, but the Avengers. Um, it it, it says when the adventurous and inquisitive Johnny. Quest and his adoptive brother Haji make a startling discovery in the swamp lands of Florida. They are pulled into an epic struggle between the space rangers and a dangerous villain who threatens the galaxy. Now it's up to the combined forces of Johnny Quest's space ghost, the Herculoids, Birdman. Frankenstein Jr., The Impossibles, and the Galaxy Trio and Mitor to stop the villain and save their universe. Uh, So, yeah, just a big collection of Hanna-Barbera characters um, saving the universe here. There are only two volumes of this. We will have to purchase these uh, if if mm. we uh, decide to do these, uh, but we can buy them on Comixology. Um, and yeah, like I said, only uh, two volumes of this, which is also about 12 issues. Um, so I thought it like my childhood was all like Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah. and cartoons like Scooby Doo and the Flintstones and Johnny Quest and Space Ghost. So why not revisit all of that stuff in a different medium? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, very pitch nice number series one, of pitches. Volumes one through three of the Power Rangers. Uh, pitch number two, the original. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Eastman and Laird. And pitch number three, Future 
quest, a much more modern take on characters uh, that we know and love from Hanna Barbera. Uh, yeah, we saw all the time on on boomerang and cartoon network and all that good stuff yes uh i know so little about teenage mutant ninja turtles i i respect the desire to go back to the original stuff but i feel like the original stuff is not what most people know so i don't know if that's going to be super helpful to me (laughs) <laughs> in evening out my TMNT knowledge with that of the average citizen. I am fascinated by Future Quest. I would really like to do this, but considering that we were, were recently in the Hanna-Barbera space with, mm-hmm. with uh, the Flintstones comics, let's shelve this. Let's do this like next sure. year. I would really yeah. like to read these. Absolutely. Especially after the conclusion of Venture Brothers, I will take anything Venture-esque, and I will take a Johnny Quest story. Yeah. I have heard great things about those Power Rangers comics. I think I pitched you maybe the Pink Ranger solo series before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to read these. Let's let's go. Let's go. Go, go, Power, go Rangers. Power Rangers. Yeah, indeed. Are Bulk and Skull in these? Bulk and Skull were my favorite part. I would assume so, that they are in there. Good. Um, I, I've, I've heard that the, the, like what you remember from like the original show it is exactly that. They nailed the characters. It's still all of that, but yet they have found a way to kind of progress that story. I don't want to say mature it, but like find new things about the character. Because that was kind of the thing about that show is it's kind of so flat, but we still loved uh-huh. it, right? Uh, like there's not much to those characters. It, it, like we discussed, it's that like Superman, like they have to kind of, yeah. stay in this one spot forever right um but yeah they have found interesting new new paths to continue down with power rangers uh so yeah that is what we will do in two weeks time then like we, we said they are available on comiXology unlimited if you are a subscriber t- to that you can go ahead and read all of those but yeah next week the good place season four is what we'll be mm-hmm. up, to, up to so uh yeah i think that about wraps us up for this week's podcast we've been t- talking for quite a while um yes melissa where can the people find you on the internet you can find me uh on the twitter and instagram that i still have even though i don't really update at wilkywit w-i-l-k-y-w-i-t and listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities. There you go. Uh, you guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter and Threads. And if you'd like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter and at The Whatnots Official on Threads. Uh, so please go like, share, and subscribe. You guys know the deal with that. We got plenty more videos for you to check out. If you're watching this on YouTube, we got some more right over there. Uh, but yeah, this has been number, oh, I don't remember the number again. Uh, but yeah, we will 263? see you all next time. Bye.